Hello everybody, how are you doing today? Hello, hope everybody is doing amazing today here in Facebook land. Welcome to Plant Trainers. Um, if you're here from Healthy Plant Based Families, welcome to. If you are here live with me, then I would love it if you would also share this. If there's a group that you think that would get something out of learning about what plant-based moms are all about, what's going on, a little bit of Mother's Day specially love for us today, then I would love for you to go ahead and press that share button down below here, my live video, share. Um, share in group, woo, healthy plant-based families. There we go, share. All right, here we go. All right, all done. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shoshana Chaim. I am the one half of the co-host of the Plant Trainers Podcast, along with Adam, my husband, my partner in business, my personal trainer? I don't know. Uh, we kind of personal train each other. But um, my name is Shoshana Chaim. I'm a health and wellness coach and I am aiming to help people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness and really other lifestyle modalities as well. We had a really, really big issue in our family. Um, probably, how old is my daughter? My daughter is turning eight. So it was nine years ago already that we had a really big um, medical scare in the family, which led us to a plant-based lifestyle, which led us to seeing that just by changing your diet alone, you can shrink tumors, um, you can possibly fix your heart disease, open your arteries back up, and this was amazing for us, this was amazing for our family, and we wanna get the word out to as many people as possible that they could live better lives that they're living right now, and also that it is possible to avoid some of these huge, huge travesties that happen that affect the whole family, that affect the extended family because 80% of diseases out there don't have to happen because of lifestyle. And being a plant-based mom is amazing. It comes with its ups and it comes with its downs and that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to give you some practical tips but also some personal experience and get a conversation going and have you get in and talk to me and see if you agree with a lot of the things that I'm saying today and how you feel about being a plant-based mom. So I could see that there's a lot more people on from when I started. So again, I've shared this in a couple of groups. If you'd like to share it in any group or on your own page as well, please go ahead and do that. If there's somebody who you think would love to learn more about being a plant-based mom, or even if they are completely knee-high, neck-high in being a plant-based mom. Let's have a conversation here today. Get them, um, get them involved, so tag them down below. And if you haven't yet followed me, press that follow button below as well. I will be handing out a little gift at the end, a little Mother's Day gift to a special lucky winner. So I do hope that you um, stay till the end. I do help, oh, hi. Hi, Sabrina. Um, who else is watching? Josh. Hi, Josh. Oh, so glad that you're here. Yay. Oh, Lindsay's here too. Amazing. Yeah, Facebook is starting to give me some more um, information now. So yes, stick through to the end. You, you can win a gift. You don't have to be a mom to win the gift, but a lucky winner who interacts today is going to win a beautiful gift. Oh, Lavonda Branch. Hello, welcome. I think this is your first live with me, so I'm really excited to have you here. Morning, Lindsay. All right, so let's talk about being a plant-based mom. As I said in the little promo that I did, I basically said that, you know, let's talk about the trilogy. Let's talk about what it really is to be a plant-based mom, to be a healthy mom, to be a good role model. Hey Lisa, hope you're doing well. And let's see if you agree with a lot of what I'm saying and let's see if you could learn something because being a plant-based mom is more than just that. It's, it's like you're a mom first always, right? And then you're plant-based. But you have to remember not to, you have to remember to not forget. You have to not forget to be a woman as well, right? Being a woman is number one. And you know, the same goes for dads. You, you know, you're gonna show up every day. You're gonna be the best dad that you could be. You're gonna be the best husband that you could be. You're gonna be the best 
wife, you're going to be the best partner, you're going to be the best daughter, whatever it is that we are in our lives, because we could really take what I'm talking about today and translate it into anybody's life, woman, man, doesn't matter, but we, we show up and we do our job really well. And then, you know, we have our values that we really show up for as well, especially if you're plant-based, especially if you're vegan or a little bit of both. Um, you know, when you feel really strongly, even religion, when you feel really strongly, you tend to put those things before yourself. And then who are you? Who are you left with? Do you know yourself? Are you taking care of yourself, right? We're really just trying to do the best that we can for our kids, those of us who are parents, and sometimes we get lost and we find so many 50, 60, 7 year olds who are finally empty nesters and now they're losing the 40 pounds and now they're taking up hobbies and now they're treating themselves well and now they're taking naps in the middle of the day if they feel that they need it. Now they're finally getting to their blood test that they haven't had in 15 years to check and make sure that everything is okay. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're incorporating all of that into our lives. So if you agree with that, I want to see a heart or a thumbs up or something. If this surprises you completely, give me a wow. Um, just let me know where you're at, if you're feeling it, if you're like, yeah, that's kind of like what I think, or oh my God, that's totally right. I'm not taking care enough of myself, or I know I need to take care of myself and I do. Or, you know, like what I, I haven't even thought about taking care of myself. Give me that wow, as I really want to know. So the trilogy today is going to be about food. It's going to be about movement or exercise. And we'll talk about that a little bit. And it's going to be about our mental health and taking care of that. Because those are really the three things that I've been lost in throughout my life at various points, especially in parenthood. Um, and it's kind of left me in a really bad spot. It's left me, there we go, some thumbs up. It's left me in a really bad spot and it's really left me thinking that um, I need to do better for myself, knowing I need to do better for myself. And it's not enough to just hear, you know, experts say it, you know, just hearing me say it doesn't mean that it's going to make a difference for you. So hopefully today something is going to tweak your interest, is going to get you thinking and is going to get you to that point where even if you are taking good care of yourself, how you can take a little bit better care of yourself. So when it comes to food, it's not just about making sure that your kids get enough, right? Especially us as plant-based parents, um, you know, even vegan parents who are really worried about, you know, the health benefits for their family, because there's lots of vegans who decided that, you know, either at the beginning or throughout that health is really important to them, that you know, it's not just enough to take care of of people by feeding them, but that we actually need to make sure that they're eating enough, that they're eating the things that make their body thrive and that we're eating what makes us thrive. Because at the end of the day, you need to take care of yourself. Because um, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of others. You're not going to be able to take care of your children. You're not going to be able to be the best partner you could be. You're not going to perform the best at work. You're not going to make the most money that you can make. You're not going to be able to stand up for animal rights the same way. You're not going to have the same energy for that. You're not going to necessarily have your health to be able to do that. So it's really not now, thank you. It's really important to make sure that you are taking care of yourself. So um, let's get into food. We're worried about what our children are eating. Our children are picky. There's so much going on in terms of food. So we wanna make sure that we're cooking meals that the kids are gonna eat. And are they getting enough protein? And are they eating enough greens? And are they just eating plain toast with you know, margarine on it? What are they eating all day long? And is that giving them enough energy? Are they gonna grow as tall as everybody else? Is their brain gonna function? Are they gonna be able to get the same jobs as everybody else? We are crazy worried about what our kids are eating because they are getting pickier and pickier as a child society these days. They're getting pickier for a lot of reasons. Number one, we're not consistent with what we feed them. And that's not always our fault. You know, you can't always feed them you know, a homemade meal from scratch without them ever tasting a French fry or a Twizzlers or, you know, Gardein chicken nuggets or whatever it is. Once they taste those things, their taste buds say, ah, I can get this sometimes. I could hold out to it. So a lot of it is what we're feeding them sometimes. A lot of it is 
um, that we're not always so consistent with what is going on at home and sometimes it's just easier to do other things and our kids become picky and then we're like, ah, oh, they're not eating everything that we're eating and how are we going to get them to eat more? So as you could notice, I've just talked about a minute and a half about how worried we are about what our kids are eating, how picky our kids are and how we worry about that also, but we're not necessarily thinking about what we are eating, right? It's a lot easier to do that you know, when you're single, it's a lot easier to do that when you have a partner, but when you start to be responsible for other living beings, it becomes a lot harder to realize what it is that you are eating as well. So being a plant-based mom or dad or what have you is really, even if you're a grandparent or any guardian taking care of children, it's really important to make sure that you are eating well as well. So what I did at the beginning is instead of spending the time making the food, I'd write down every single thing my kids ate and I would break it down and I would write how much protein was in there, how many carbohydrates were in there, how much sugar was in there, are they getting, how much vitamin A was in there, how much vitamin C was in there, um, how much calcium, how much iron. And I wrote that down for like two weeks for both of my children, everything they ate. And then I just realized that if I ate well and they were eating what I was eating, that everything was going to be okay. But it, it, I really, like, I, I went totally nuts. I went totally nuts. And let me know if you went totally nuts. Also, worried about if your kids are getting everything. So now, you know, people can give me, I have clients who say, I want you to check and make sure that my kids are getting what they need. I ask them to write out a five day list of everything the kids have eaten. And I don't even need to calculate anything. I could just look at it and eyeball it and have a good sense of are they getting enough and aren't they getting enough and what do we need to change? Because that's how, you know, that's how crazy I was about my own kids and then getting more education just kind of sealed the deal. So you need to make a list of what works. What works in the house? What meals work for everybody that are meals that you feel good about? Being a plant-based mom, what feels great for you and make a list because you don't want, yes, Carrie, awesome, totally been there. Mira, welcome, hey. You know, make a list of what works for the whole family. You know, maybe it's gonna be a burrito night and maybe you're gonna make a chili and you're gonna leave some black beans on the side and maybe your five-year-old is at the point where they don't wanna eat the full chili mixed in with the tomato sauce and all that, but leaving all of those beans and corn and all the other ingredients that you're putting in there or leaving some of that on the side and letting them put them in the burrito too, you're not making something completely different. It's not taking any extra time, but you're able to feed the whole family, whole foods all at the same time without having to worry about what's going on. You know, maybe you have one kid who's totally hates kale and another one who totally loves romaine lettuce. Well, okay, nutritionally, they're not exactly balanced. However, you can totally put them both on the table and let them choose and let them choose. Talk about some of those properties, but at the same time, that's gonna be there for you because as a parent, you need to make sure that you're getting in what you need to get in. So yes, as parents, we concentrate so much on what our kids eat, but when was the last time that you concentrated so much on what you eat? So let me know right now in the comments just to help out the other people who are watching or who are watching back on the replay and hello. And for those of you who joined us, there will be, for those of you who are interacting a lot, there will be a prize handed out at the end. Um, so make sure that you're interacting or sharing this with anybody who might want to see it. But I wanna know what meals work for you. What meals work for you that make you feel like you're eating well? Because we all know that when we eat, you know, the the fried foods, or if we get, you know, a really heavy coconut oil and coconut milk kind of Thai that order in, sometimes we just don't feel so good the next day, or by the, you know, by the time we go to bed, we're feeling lethargic, we're not feeling good. So, what are those really good meals that make you feel good that your kids can enjoy in too? I know that for some families, soup is amazing. Putting all these veggies into soup, having some nice high quality bread on the side to dip in, um, you know, maybe even dip in some broccoli florets. And for some families, that's an amazing meal. For us, it's burrito night because we could put in beans, we could put in chili, I could have the chili frozen. Um, we'll use wraps or sometimes we'll just use lettuce wraps or we'll use kale wraps. And we'll have all of this good stuff to put in. 
So for us, that really works as well. So let me know what makes what works for you. Black bean burgers, homemade, amazing. The plant trainer's burger works pretty well in this house too. My daughter's off of it for a little bit, but I'll just replace that with avocado and I'll pull out some chickpeas and throw it on the side of her plate and some almonds, throw it on the side of her plate. And that's what she'll get um, to make up for that. So again, you know, I'm not doing anything extra. Um, there's avocado on the table, there's nuts and seeds and all that kind of stuff around too. So burgers are a great meal as well. Um, another way, and people are saying, oh, you know, I work, I work so much, how am I supposed to? Hey Jessica, hope all is well. I managed to share today, Jess. Yay, proud of me. Um, so for those of you who are saying, how am I gonna get all of this done? I don't have, you know, an hour a day to, to make dinner. When I get home, I need to just be able to throw it on the table in 15 minutes while everybody else washes up and gets their stuff organized. How do I do it? And the answer is prep flicks. Plant-based moms, this is what you need to know. It's called prep, prep flicks. What it is, is Netflix on your phone or your tablet and prep time for you. So a Sunday afternoon, you tell everybody an hour and a half is mom time. The only time you're coming into the kitchen is to quietly take a snack on your own and not bother me, or to ask, is there anything I could do? <coughs> Excuse me. Is there anything I can do to help? For example, peel carrots or cut carrots or cut cucumber or wash lettuce. Otherwise you are completely on your own. You and Netflix have a date. You put in your earphones, you listen to um, whatever movie you watch, whatever movie you want, that it's an hour and a half, and you cut the vegetables, you boil, you get your beans boiled, whatever it is that needs to be prepped for the week you work on. You make those black bean burgers or those plant trainer sweet potato almond burgers, and you get them prepped up that you have a month worth of burgers ahead of you. Jessica, hey, thought you were on at a usual afternoon, so you're late to the party. I know this afternoon I'm actually going to a school, running a workshop there on mindfulness and yoga, so it had to be a morning show today. I'm really sorry. I think I said it in the last one, but I know that not everybody watches full through, so don't worry about that. Next week it will be back um, to an afternoon show. So moms, plant-based moms, let prep flicks be your friend. Let that be a time for you to treat yourself to watching a movie, whatever movie you want. It does not have to be SpongeBob. It does not have to be a Teen Titans Go or um, who are those dogs that like fly around and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be any of that. It could be a chick flick. It could be an action flick. It could be a documentary, although documentaries aren't usually an hour and a half. They're usually a little bit longer, but whatever, you know, you could save the other half for the next week or for the next time you're doing prep, but prep flicks is my savior. It's my one time to watch chick flicks. It is my one time to put in my headphones and say, leave me alone because I'm doing this for you, but really I'm doing it for me because it means less stress during the week. It means that I need to know what's for dinner during the week so I'm more organized and I like being in the kitchen. It makes me feel good and you know, Adam can take them to the park. That could be everybody's screen time. Um, they could have friends over. They could be at friends' houses. It doesn't matter, but prep flicks is all the way. Say it with me, prep flicks. Prep flicks, prep flicks. Carrie, you're having a terrible time figuring out how to do plant-based and get your family to eat it, but not gain weight. When I've tried it, I gained weight. Terrible, and I've had lots of joint pains for some reason, not to mention kidney stones. Okay, so what it sounds like is that you have a lot of underlying factors, a lot of underlying issues going on already, and it's not because of the plant-based, but eating plant-based is kind of showing you how it's coming up, uh, showing you that it's there. But the other thing is that, you know, if you are gaining a lot of weight eating plant-based, are you doing a really high, um, you know, really high processed flour kind of diet? Or are you doing a ton of fat? Um, and are you com maybe for some people combining foods is not an issue for some people combining foods is an issue so there's really a lot to look at and it's not as simple as answering it on on a Facebook live it means that you've got some other things that you need to look at and if you want to talk about that after I'm happy to talk to you about that after um, 
a lot of people will say, you know, I've gone plant-based and I've gained a ton of weight or I've gone plant-based and my hair has fallen out. And really what that is telling us is that there's an underlying issues that we need to deal with and we need to look at. Can plant-based be, you know, perfect for everybody? I truly believe it is, but I don't believe that the makeup of the diet, it needs to be the same for everybody. Some people need more, some people need to supplement for a while to get certain levels back up. Kidney stones, I don't want to say what they are on live, on live TV, on live Facebook, but you know, kidney stones are awful to deal with and there are certain foods that you need to avoid. There are certain things that you need to do to eliminate them and start fresh. So that is a whole other thing. And you know, that comes up for a lot of moms too. They know that they want to be plant-based. They know that they want to be a hundred percent there, that this is it. This is the best way. This is the only way to give your children the best chance of having the most protection against, you know, 80% of the illnesses that can come their way in the future, that this is what's going to get rid of your son's eczema, let your daughter start sleeping through the night, um, help your children's brain thrive, help you to clear your mind, to have a clearer mind, to have more energy, to beat that fatigue, to deal with your stress and anxiety. Like this is it, people but it's not easy for everyone. And that's something that you need to hear because very often we hear how easy it is for everyone. And that really lets us down as parents because we say, okay, we're trying to do this for ourselves. We're trying to do this for the kids, but everything's going wrong. How come it's easier for everybody else? There must be something wrong with me. And there might be something wrong with you in terms of deep inside your body, there's something wrong that we need to take care of. But at the end of the day, really what it is, is there's, um, there's no one solution, there's no one diet within you know, plant-based lifestyle that will be perfect for everybody because we're all starting at completely different points. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say, moms, is often we feel like we don't treat ourselves. And that's why I like the prep flicks because you could treat yourself to a movie, get things done at the same time, there's no guilt involved because you don't feel like you're just sitting on your bum, not doing the laundry or whatever it is. Um, or not out playing with the kids or whatever it is, but um, often we feel that we're not treating ourselves. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in mental health, different ways to give ourselves some um, self-care, different ways to make us feel as if we're taking care of ourselves too. But what I want you to try to get away from if you're there or not get into is treating yourself with food. It's saying, wow, I've worked so hard this week. I've taken everybody to soccer, everybody to running, everybody to hockey, everybody to gymnastics. Um, I've made these amazing meals. I'm just gonna sit down at this coffee shop and I'm gonna order two gluten-free vegan muffins and I'm gonna scarf them because I deserve it. You deserve it, but that's not necessarily what you deserve. You deserve to feed your body with foods that are gonna make you feel good, high vibration, high vibration foods, foods that are gonna give you more energy, foods that are gonna make your skin so much clearer, foods that are going to not help you gain weight, foods that are gonna help you beat, beat your goals, meet your goals. You really don't wanna add that emotional connection to food. So you don't wanna say, ah, oh, I did amazing, I deserve some food. Take a bath. Take a walk, take a nap, read a book, watch a show on television, get together with a friend and go for coffee. And if you happen to have a muffin, have a muffin. I'm not saying don't have the muffin, but what I'm saying is don't take that emotional attachment and connect it to food because then you're gonna say, oh, that was such a hard day. You know, Tommy and Jane had soccer all day and I got dinner on the table and oh, I deserve, you know, four cups of skinny pop which doesn't make you skinny by the way got oil in it corn doesn't go well with everybody's system right like it's a different thing so you know then you're going to do it tuesday night you're going to do the same thing wednesday night you're maybe going to do it saturday night and then sunday nights you know pizza night where you order in pizza and you know that's not the best for you and then you wake up monday morning kind of puffy and you're not feeling so great um so don't treat yourself with treats your treat should be you know, take the time to, your treat should be go to the organic store and spend the $8 on the organic watermelon and come home and stick some mint and some watermelon in the blender and make yourself a smoothie. It should be going to the juice shop down the street with a friend and spending the $9 on a juice. It, you know, 
if you're going to attach your treat with food, it should be foods that make you feel really good about yourself. It shouldn't be the junk foods. The junk foods should be, okay, this is okay for me to have every now and then in my diet. I know that I will not continue to eat this way throughout the next three days because I had one little muffin or one little cupcake. If, if it works for you within your lifestyle, within your diet, with working towards your goals, have those pieces of junk food every now and then, you know, if that works for you. But don't let that be your treat and your reward for everything that you're doing as a mom. You should be pampering yourself in other ways, with naps, with TV, with juice, with fruit, with vegetables, with a huge salad, with a, uh, I'm not making dinner tonight, you guys are responsible for dinner tonight. Those are the ways that you should be treating yourself. Um, and especially as Mother Day, Mother's Day is coming up this weekend, there will probably be treats, right? Like there will be cupcakes or there will be cake or there will be, you know, chocolate bark or, you know, all of these great things. That's fine. If it works for you, eat it. But don't let that be your prize. That should not be your prize. Your prize should be something that makes you feel sexy, that makes you feel high energy, that makes you want to help people more. And this is really one of the points that I really wanted to drive through today, um, that we need to be treating ourselves the same way that we treat our children, the same way that we treat our spouses or friends or parents or what have you, but it doesn't have to be with the junk food that makes us feel disgusting later. Find another way. And I would love to hear from all of you as I begin to get into the movement portion. I'd love for you to start telling me some of those high vibration rewards you can give yourself or you can ask for other than the cupcakes, right? Okay. Or the Ben and Jerry's ice cream, which you can get at the, at the um, shoppers here, which is the pharmacy. You could get the Ben and Jerry's no dairy ice cream at, at the pharmacy, which is amazing, but doesn't make me feel amazing. It doesn't make me wake up for my workout in the morning and perform my very best. Um, it doesn't make me my best. So that's not a treat. That's not a treat, right? A car accident is not a treat. So neither are these foods if they make you feel really disgusting. All right, exercise and movement. So I kind of clump those together because exercise is really important. Strength training for the body is important. Um, you know, our cardiovascular health is important, but exercise we kind of look at is, okay, I'm putting on my sweatband. I'm you know, putting on my shorts, um, putting, lacing up my runners, I'm going for a run, I'm lifting really hard. But really, what a lot of us need to concentrate on is just moving more throughout the day. A lot of us are sitting in front of our computers all day, a lot of us are sitting at our jobs all day, or driving in the car all day, so how are you getting your movement in? It's great to go to the gym at the end of the day and, you know, bang out an hour, an hour and a half. But that does not help your mortality rate compared to people who are not exercising but are just freely moving throughout the day all day long, right? So that's something to consider, that's something to think about. So what does movement do? Movement can stimulate our happy hormones, right? Mo movement can um, make us more confident. It could build our self-esteem. It could encourage us to make healthier choices throughout the day. So whether it means lacing up your shoes and going to, you know, going for a run, or I love to go to Orange Fitness, Orange Theory Fitness, you know, those things, when I do those things, or going down to the basement and lifting weights, or if you don't have weights, lift water bottles or babies or what have you, you know, those things make me feel good. And then I don't want to come home and you know, open the jar of peanut butter. I mean, sometimes I do, because if I'm starving, I do, but I don't. You know, open up the jar of peanut butter, find some chocolate chips, put it together on a spoon and eat that. Like, that's not gonna help, right? I wanna feel, I want that to fuel me. I want that to help me feel sexier throughout the day. I wanna be setting an example for my kids. So I'm gonna eat, you know, a really big salad. When I'm talking about a big salad, I'm talking about a big salad. I'm gonna eat a really big salad. I'm gonna have, you know, some leftover rice with a ton of vegetables. I'm gonna have something, I'm gonna make myself a big smoothie. I'm gonna have something throughout the rest of the day or you know, a ton of bananas, like four bananas. I'm gonna have something throughout the rest of the day that's gonna make me feel good, that's gonna work off of that. When we eat that cupcake, we feel like, 
okay, well, I've already had a cupcake. What's a handful of chips? What's, you know, a handful of popcorn? Uh, okay, well, today's screwed. I'm going to continue. Let's go the opposite way. Today started off great. Let's continue that way. Today didn't start off so great. That's okay. There's always a next minute. There's always a next meal. There's always a next snack where we can absolutely start. Um, when you exercise or when you move, you could also multitask. So for example, take your kids to the park, walk there, or if, you, if the park's too long, then you can drive there, but then walk around the park while your kids are playing. Walk around the park, jog around the park, lift yourself or jump up to do a chin up. And if you can't do a chin up, that's fine. Jump up to do the chin up and then slowly let yourself down so that you're building some resistance. There's different ways to move other than just sitting on the park bench, trying to read a book, surfing on Facebook, watching the replays of, you know, Shoshana from the Blunt Traders podcast, doing all this. You know, there, there's other things to do. Use your time wisely, multitask, or stick in your earbuds, Watch my video while you walk around. Listen to the Plant Trainers podcast while you're walking around the park. You know, there's time if you're looking to socialize with other moms, have other moms meet you at the park. As the kids play, walk around the park. You're socializing, you're moving, and you're getting your kids outside into fresh air all at the same time. You know, as moms, it's hard to do it all, but when we start to multitask properly, that is a great way. It's not a good thing to multitask and, you know, listen to nutritionfacts.org while you're cooking dinner and helping your kid with the, with their homework. You're not going to be present for any of that, right? Like something's going to go wrong. You're going to cut your finger. You're going to put, you know, two tablespoons of chili powder instead of half a teaspoon of chili powder. You're not, you're not actually going to help your kid or you're not going to hear a thing that you're, that you have in your earbuds. So make sure that when you are multitasking that it is multitasking that is actually good for you. Um, and of course you have to negotiate with your partner. If you have a partner and you know, and I've been there and it was really hard and I pretended that it wasn't hard for a long time, but when Adam was training for his first Ironman, he was amazing. Don't get me wrong. He was absolutely amazing. And the problem wasn't with him. The problem was with me. He would wake up at four in the morning he would go for a run, then he would get to the pool and he would swim and you know he'd have all of these workouts going on during the day and then all of a sudden you know he'd be home for dinner which was amazing so you know like he, he it's not like he wasn't around he'd be exhausted by eight o'clock so he'd be in bed at like 7 30 quarter to eight I, we'd put the kids to bed then he would go to bed and I was all alone at night and I wasn't necessarily working out myself because I didn't really have the time. I couldn't leave the house in the morning. The kids were younger, so it was harder to, um, you know, it was harder to go to the basement and run and work out, or maybe I'm just making excuses for myself. And then at seven o'clock, you know, who feels like working out after you've eaten? And it was just, I didn't do take care of me. I didn't make any room for me to be working out properly. And then I realized that so all I really needed to do is say to Adam look you're doing what you're doing I don't want you to stop that but I need you to help me carve out some time so that I can work out too so whether that meant that he was responsible for dinner twice a week or you know I would get dinner ready because he was still at work maybe I would get dinner ready and then I would start working out while he fed the kids and ate with the kids and then I would eat later. You need to negotiate and you need to work with your partner. So whether it's, you know, whether it's another parent of your children, whether it's grandparents who can help out, siblings who could help out, um, not your children's siblings, your siblings who could help out, neighbors, babysitters, what have you, you need to put that in place that you have time for your exercise or your movement. Um, and I don't want the word exercise to scare anybody because exercise is going to look different to, to everybody. So for some people, it might be getting up and walking down the street for 10 minutes. And that is your movement and that is your exercise. And doing that once a day, five days a week. Then doing it twice a day, five days a week. Then doing it twice a day, six days a week, right? And that's what it might be. I had a client where her exercise was pacing up and down the hall for five minutes a day. And then eventually we built it to walking around the house for 10 minutes a day or walking around the property for 20 minutes a day or the block or what have you. So really everybody's gonna start where they are. But for me, um, my exercise is really important. As you know, um, 
I'm working my way out of adrenal fatigue, either stage two or three. She didn't feel like testing any further than stage two, but um, you know, I'm working my way out and exercise is really important. Sleep is really important. Um, you know, so between less sleep, trying to work more, trying to exercise, trying to be the best parent I am, I worked myself into this frenzy where my body couldn't keep up with me. Um, so we really need to negotiate with our partners for help. We need to negotiate with our time for help and what's more important. And like I said at the beginning, you need to take care of yourself so you could take care of others. You need to take care of yourself so that you could grow your business. Maybe your business needs to grow slower at the same time, but at least you'll be around to be able to grow it, right? Um, you know, your kids might need your attention, but maybe they learn to learn how to be independent. Maybe you need to give them some screen time for three hours a week in different chunks so that you can get some exercise done in the house, in the backyard, what have you, or get a babysitter. Um, I do like getting a babysitter and telling the babysitter you have to take them to the park because they're being paid to watch them. You have to take them to the park and that way you know that they're not home um, working out and it's costing me $10 to get my work in, my workout in, but at least my kids are taken care of. They feel like somebody's watching over them. They're able to interact with somebody and I'm able to take care of me. So these are things that you really need to think about as a mom too. Okay, any questions on exercise, movement? I feel like standing up. Okay, here we go. Oh, look my swell bottle. You like standing up because I've been sitting for a really long time, but then I have to readjust the camera. So I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna encourage you to stand up where you are and just get moving. Last night I was at a meeting. It actually went from like 8 p.m. till about 11.15 and I stood up halfway because I was just sitting for way too long, way too long. All right, moms, we've got one more to go and that is mental health. Mental health is something that is true to me. It's really important to me. We podcast about it. We just had, um, we just had a doctor on talking about plant-based diet and how it affects your mental health. And it really does. And you know, your, your gut and your microbiome and all of that affects your brain and the way that you think about things and how happy you are and all of those things are really affected by, by what you eat. And I've seen a lot of people post, you know, like, food is not the solution for your depression or your anxiety. It might not be the solution, but it's definitely a tool. It is most definitely a tool. And that is something that I know um, for sure. So, you know, I've had struggles in the past, PTSD from that big trauma that I talked about at the beginning. And again, if you know anybody who's suffering from mental health issues, who needs to hear that diet can, can help press send right now, uh, or I mean share right now or, or call them in or share this when it's done to them personally because it's really important to know that um, you know the way that you eat can really affect your mental health whether you suffer from mental illness or just mental health issues um, you know one thing that I noticed when I started eating really well is that yeah I was still anxious yeah I was still kind of depressed but I was able to reach for my tools and I was able to use them. Where when I wasn't eating plant-based or when I eat too junky of a vegan diet, then what will happen is I'll spin. And instead, not spin in terms of EFT, um, but I'll, or NLP, I'll spin out of control because I won't be able to hold on to those tools. I won't be able to grab them. I won't be able to take my breath. So I won't be able to tap. I won't be able to do my actual spinning. I won't be able to meditate or journal. I won't be able to think of all of that and I'll go into complete panic mode and I'll just be like, must make dinner, must do this, must get this done, must get that done. And then before I know it, I'm a blob on the floor and I can't get up. So eating really well really does help me. Lately, I've been having a little bit of um, some image issues as well, some self-image issues. And it's funny because I'll look in the mirror sometimes and I don't know, I haven't had this in a really long time, but I'll look in the mirror and I'll say, oh, I don't like this part about my body or when did my face turn this, this size and, and why do I look like this? Um, and I've been having some mental it, some image issues um, with myself lately and I feel that when I set myself up for success and I know that I'm eating well and I know that I'm making good decisions and I know that I'm showing up for the gym 
then I know that I'm just doing the very best that I can do and this is me. This is me and if I wanna change something, I need to make a plan and I need to work on it. Or I need to say, this is what I can do for me now and I'm okay with what I have. But for some reason over the last two weeks, it, it's been a little bit different. And then of course on Instagram, I posted, and it was really hard for me to post this video. So if you go to at plant trainers when we're done, and make sure you follow us there because we have a lot of good stuff happening there that doesn't necessarily happen here. But, um, you know, I had some videos. We're putting up a video on Sundays now for a tip of the week. And I just worked out. I had obviously hadn't showered. I don't put on makeup to go work out when I work out first thing in the morning, only if I've already had makeup on from the rest of the day. Um, so, and my hair was like up and it was a hair washing day and I had a huge dry shampoo. And I was just sitting on my stairs still, I would have still been huffing and puffing, but it took four takes to make it work. Um, and I was basically, you know, tip of the week, make sure you put your workout into your schedule because like otherwise, boom, it's gone. So it's gotta be just as important as a dentist appointment. And somebody replied to me and they said, girl, you could have pulled yourself together before putting that video up. And that was the moment that I stopped having those self image issues because I was really proud of myself. It was hard to put up because, not because it took four takes, it was hard to put up because I knew I didn't look my best, right? I knew my hair wasn't smooth and you know, like I had like, you know, when you get like those workout blots and blemishes all over, like they're not always there, just like your face is still red and you've got all the circulation going. So, you know, every, all your, anyway. I didn't look good but so but I said you know what it doesn't matter what I look it's it's the message that's what's important and I press send and then boom like within 10 minutes that was the answer that I got and then I was like you know what who cares who cares call me on it you can call me on it all day long but if I'm confident enough to show up if I'm confident enough to put that up if I just worked out if I'm eating well if I'm my lunch is a smoothie that I planned and I know that I'm doing everything that I can do within my limitations, within the time that I have throughout the day, within my mental health issues that I have, without, with being a parent, with running a business, with getting the sleep that I wanna get, um, that I need to get by you know taking the supplements that I need to be taking now for my adrenal fatigue, by eliminating foods that aren't working for me and adding in foods that are. If this is who I am in this very moment, why shouldn't I show that to everybody? You think I look like this all the time? No, I don't. I showered this morning. I blow dried my hair. I'm going to run a workshop this afternoon. Um, I'm leaving my house. I want to look a certain way. But there's times where the way that I want to look is exactly fresh, is exactly however it is that I'm supposed to look in that very moment without putting in the effort because my effort's going into creating content for you. My effort's going into our ebook. My effort's going into the next Plant Trainers podcast. My effort's going into the next Instagram post. My effort's going into planning these Facebook Lives for you on Wednesday, which you should press the follow button below, by the way, if you're enjoying what's happening here. Um, you know, so that's what's really important. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for the thumbs up. I also saw those hearts and those thumbs up, and they make me feel really good. So, you know, in terms of mental health, the idea is do what you need to do for you to keep you happy. Movement is going to, although it might be painful and although some of you might not like it, find what you can do within your limitations to get those happy hormones going. You know, make the, choose the food that's good for you as a parent. Make those choices to have some self-care rituals like a nap, like reading a book, like watching you know, a show on Netflix. Not a hundred shows, don't get carried away here people, but take the time for you when it's appropriate, when you need it, schedule it in so that you feel like a woman too. Because that's really, you know, I, I think that that's what Mother's Day is about. I think that Mother's Day is about taking time with your family for them to celebrate you, for them to you know, honor you, but then also choosing a day, a reminder to choose a day or an hour or a minute or whatever it is to take some time to be a woman as well. Because it's really hard to forget that you're a mom, really hard, but it's even, it, it, it you know, there's been so many times where I've just forgotten that I'm a woman. I've forgotten that I'm sexy. I've forgotten that I have 
<laughs> needs. I don't, that's not what I meant, but that I have needs beyond taking care of my family. You know, um, you know, I'm so lucky to have Adam who takes care of the family as well. We, we share a lot of that, but at the same time, you know, what do I do for me? That's outside of work. You know, a lot of my lunch dates, they're work related too. So, you know, take the time to go out with the girls or to do something that isn't networking for your job and isn't for your children. Do it for you so that you could be the biggest, strongest person that you can be to be able to show up for all your other roles in your life, including being a parent or a partner or a sister or a brother or, you know, a child or, or what have you. So exercise more, eat better, take care of your mental health, and know that everything that you do is going to help you progress as a person and as a woman. Okay, so that, that was a little bit hard sharing that, that you know, self, self image thing because that's something that really hasn't come up in a, in a lot of years. A little bit when I was pregnant, although I thought it was hilarious that I got to like 175 pounds when I was pregnant if I, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have eaten a lot differently during my pregnancies. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, happy Mother's Day to everybody. But I think last week or this week, we had like International Women's Day. I think that for us as individuals, that's that much more important. And maybe our family should be honoring us as women more than they're honoring us as mothers because as mothers they should be saying thank you after eat every meal they should be saying thank you for driving me here and there you should be getting showered with thanks all day long with gratitude all day long um, but the opportunity to remember to be a woman is that much more important so that is my message for you today if you have enjoyed this um, I really would appreciate if you follow, if you haven't liked us on Plant Trainers yet, um, like Plant Trainers on Facebook or follow us on Instagram and also share this if you think that there are people, if the general masses you could share or share to individuals if you think that they would get something out of this because I think that a lot of it is stuff that we know but not necessarily stuff that we remember and stuff that we take care of ourselves and stuff that we have high on our priority list, but this is the time of year to remind us of those kinds of things. Um, we're going to choose a winner now. Um, I know that I have somebody awesome from my marketing team here, not sure who it is today, but if they can choose someone who's been interactive and that person is going to win a 20 minute um, getting to know you, ask me anything, phone conversation with me to interact, to have fun, to just chat and just talk. Um, I'd love to get to know you more. If you have questions, then I can help to answer those questions within those 20 minutes. So that is my Mother's Day gift um, to you. Yeah. If you have other people who you'd like to, you know, get a Mother's Day gift for who are maybe thinking about going plant-based, we do have our plant-based um, ebook. It's easy recipes for busy parents you don't have to be a parent or busy to enjoy those recipes but it really does um it really really does have the least amount of ingredients of any cookbook that i've seen we try to reuse the same ingredients so that you're having completely different meals but not having a laundry list of um shopping to do that's gonna end up wasting your money your money all right, so what I would love to know from you is what is one thing that you've took, taken away from this Facebook Live today? What is one thing that you've taken away that you would like to incorporate or remember or share with somebody else? So if I know that there's a delay, so now I'm asking it and it's like 1049 my time, you're not going to get it to like 1040. 52 year time or something like that. So I hope that we're able to share some of those before I end But if I don't just pop them in whether you are live or on the replay. Thank you so much I'm so grateful that you're here today watching and listening. It is absolutely Amazing that you are here with me today. All right, so I don't have any um, Comment Ooh, you'll have to watch from the beginning who's saying that Joan welcome. Yay, Joan was our winner last week. Amazing um, 
You were outside doing school. Awesome. So yeah, so now you're going to go to mommy school. You'll watch the, the video from the beginning. Um, all right, so I'm just going to kind of scroll here to kind of find a winner. Um, and wherever it lands, it will land. And our winner is Lisa Marie. Okay, so Lisa Marie, please, you could PM Plant Trainers or you could PM me, Shoshana Chaim, and I will set up a time with you for your 20 minute, congratulations, 20 minute mom getting to know you, ask me anything conversation. I'm so happy to um, have this conversation and get to know you. So that would be great. PM me so that we could work that out. And everybody, we will be back. Oh, next week, we're actually, oh, it's a little bit under up, out of my comfort zone, but it's okay. Next week, it's going to be a, I believe it's going to be 5.30 Eastern time. It's going to be Adam and I on the barbecue. We're going to be doing some Barbie, people. I don't know what kind of accent that is. We're going to be doing some Barbie. Um, so join us. The cat is drinking my daughter's water that she left on the table. Oh well, just water. You're welcome, Marie. Thank you, Lorraine. And I hope that everybody has an amazing week. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. So much love to you all. I'm so grateful that you're here watching and um, I'll see you soon. Bye.